Okay, looks like we are live. Got to double check everything. I am live. All right. Okay, hello. Welcome to Wire Wednesday number 31. Uh, today we're doing abandoned loop, start to finish. Uh, this is what I have due today. Sorry about the mic thing. I should have tucked it in my shirt, but hey, you know. Anyway, live stream, we're doing abandoned loop start to finish. I'm going to wait a little bit, let some people start arriving. Uh, I am running about an hour late. I had to do tax stuff this morning, and I am not good at that. I can bend your retainer, but I can't do your taxes, and it's not fun. So anyway, I was doing taxes crap this morning, and uh, yeah, that's it. I'm going to check some settings while you are sitting there and make sure everything is good All right, I'm checking, 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 checking alright well today is uh, December 19th I got a calendar here yes December 19th uh, it is next next week is Christmas if you believe it or not Let's see. Okay. Check in, check in, check in. Make sure everything is good. I'm going to preview this. All right. It looks like. Yeah, looks like I'm live and I'm good to go. Just nobody has showed up yet. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> well, let's get started. So, again, today we're doing uh, band and loop. I did get a band and loop uh, from a doctor. This is going to be a little different. I think I've done band and loop before on Wire Wednesday, and I do have. Um, if you're watching the recording and I've, I've updated the video, I might put some links somewhere around here to a couple band and loops video that I've already done. So in case, and I'll try to add this to a playlist maybe and have a whole string of band and loop videos to do there. So uh, while I'm doing that, I want to see if I can find this. Sorry, I'm trying to find. Here we go. Maybe and have a whole string of band and loop videos to do there. So uh, while I'm doing that, I want to got a little. See if I can find this. There. Okay, here I am. All right. So I'm going to get started. Again, this is just band and loop. Uh, regular, if you're just joining, this is Wire Wednesday number 31. Sorry, it's starting a little later than it usually does. I uh, had taxes this morning. And uh, so I'm going to get go ahead and get started. This is just a regular band and loop, a regular space maintainer. The difference is um, this one, sorry, you weren't watching me. But this one is a little different because I got to fit a band. So I'm going to show you my process for fitting a band and um, getting that done that way. So let's see. All right. Let's get this show on the road. As you can see, so this is what the model looks like. Uh, I poured it up from the impression. And you can tell, usually you can tell from the impression uh, where which side you need to pour up and it's the one with the missing tooth if it doesn't have a missing well this one does have a missing tooth but this is the most recent but uh, the doctor said you know told me to band this tooth number T or whatever and run the loop to J I can't remember the instructions I don't want to bring them out in case uh, HIPAA violations or whatever but uh, you can see this is a freshly extracted uh, tooth there's some gums here that are splayed out in the shape of the tooth 
uh, before they pulled it. Uh, so I'm going to actually grind some of this off and smooth it off and I'll show you how I do that. But first I need to prep this. The band is going to go on this tooth. i got to fit the band or size it. And then the loop is going to go up here. Now this is a partially erupted, looks like a canine or bicuspid, I can't really tell. Probably bicuspid. Uh, but it it's partially erupted so I can't go all the way to the tooth because I think there's more of this angle right here underneath I think my camera here sagged a little bit oh I was on the wrong camera That's this will help there we go so as you can tell uh, this is not fully erupted yet and so I gotta put the loop against the loop part against here so uh, I'll show you when I get to that but let me change cameras and I'll show you how I grind this out to uh, do the to fit the band alright I'm over here I'm going to turn on the suction so I don't get dust everywhere and what I usually like to use, sorry for the banding on this uh, camera view, the, the light I use is the wrong kilowatt or, or the wrong frequency for recording on for my recording. But I'm going to use this half round burr and put it in my handpiece. And so I've drawn on there, so I'm going to remove all the stone from underneath that line, but leave that line help if I turn on the now I've seen Steve Zara do this and he uses a disc and I need to get me one of those discs big huge disc probably does a great job now I'm, I'm trying to not grind the tooth any I'm just trying to remove just the gums I'm trying to keep as much of the tooth structure available And you got to, the bad thing about fitting your own bands is you have to really have a good anatomy of teeth and uh, how they're shaped and be able to look at a tooth and go, oh, it looks bigger under the gum, so I need to keep it a little bit bigger. I like this burr because I can keep the shaft part of the burr right on my mark and it will ditch underneath it. got the shape I want this yeah all right so now I'm going to switch to a regular burr like an acrylic burr or something something smoothing because I want to smooth this off so these flaps of skin or flaps of gum they're not there anymore so they they existed when they took the impression but by the time a few days have passed these they've healed they've collapsed in they've healed over and now this is probably just a nice smooth uh, arch right there so I'm going to remove some of this some of this gum and try to it's, a, it's kind of a guessing game how much but If you've been around the world enough, you kind of know how everything heals up. So there we go. I like that. Don't want to go too much because if you put your wire right on top of it and the gums did not heal all the way, you'd just be impinging on the gums. All right, I'm going to. Well, I'll do it with a knife. I was, said I was going to take a brown burr and kind of doctor this up right here, but. Um, I'm not going to. I'm going to do it with a knife. I can control it better. Uh, 
I'm back. So I've prepped the tooth. It's ready for a band. Let me get my... Okay. So now I'm going to carefully... Try to get in the middle of this camera here. I'm just going to flatten the gums out just ever so slightly. Because again, they're not going to be this puffy in the mouth as it exists now after, after they've healed. So I'm going to make just a slight shelf to lay my um, wire on. I can get a better angle at this. Change my loveliness of uh, live streaming. You can get to see all my camera adjustments. So I'm just, again, I'm going to flatten that out. I'm a little worried because this tooth isn't erupted all the way, so there may be a corner underneath here. But the good thing is, I'm going to put a bend in here in the wire, and the doctor can adjust it back and forward uh, to in case that tooth has erupted or drifted back some uh, they can adjust the the wire I'm gonna go turn off the suction unit real quick all right so I'm gonna get my nice camera switching thanks Jay Jay did you call me yesterday or was that one of your grandkids on the phone I, I picked up my phone the other day and saw that you had called me on Facebook Messenger but uh, let's see upper lower these are lowers all right So, this is a band kit. I'm going to zoom out just a tad so you can see it. This I actually got from a doctor's office. So, always be nice to the assistants. Uh, when Sometimes doctors will switch band companies and they will... Um, that was you, Jay? Okay, I'll call you after this video. And uh, I'll call you back. Uh, so, always be nice to the assistants. Uh, and the doctors, you know, have a really good relationship because sometimes they'll give you your old, their old bands when they switch companies or in this case they switch bracket size. So they went from a 018 bracket size to 022 bracket size. And because of that, they didn't want to use the 018 anymore. And so these were in storage for years. And so one of the assistants contacted me and said, hey, do you want these bands? I was like, heck yeah. Even if I had to cut the uh, bracket off, you know, it, it's fine with me. I, it's free bands. And of course, I give them a discount for whenever I fit bands for them. So, you know, scratch my back, I'll scratch yours kind of thing. But always, I, I've gotten, I didn't get a uh, brack, uh, what do you call these things? These, I didn't get one for all four of these. These are all the uppers, 018, uh, upper right upper left so the lowers are here and I didn't did I mark these band appliances only she put this cool little saran wrap on here which worked out great hopefully soon I can get uh, uh, what am I thinking of a, a case for them is that what I'm trying to think of cases so this is lower right this is lower right and I'm just gonna randomly grab one and try to fit it and that is too big I wonder if you can see that let me zoom in just a little bit so you can see that my bracket is just too big or band is too big there we go so I'm gonna drop down let's say 16 you, if they have brackets, you can always tell which way they face 
because the loop here goes gingival and points distal. So I think I'm getting closer. That band is a little wompy jawed. Okay. Let's go to 14. And I think Steve Zara said that uh, he fits his about a, a size and a fourth smaller than what, you know, is shown on here. So I'm going to try to keep it small. This size 14. I might just go jump to 12. So you see I'm jumping in twos right now. There we go. I think we got it. Size 12. So I'm looking at the top of the tooth here. And I'm looking to see all the spaces around it. So I, I have an advantage. I used to actually fit bands on in patients' mouths. So I know kind of what fits on there. The bad part is on the stone models, they don't slide on up and down. You know, the enamel and the saliva and stuff, it's smooth and it slides up and down it not so much on here so you know if if I'm worried sometimes it's good to go a size bigger if you're worried because they can always fit a bigger slightly bigger band than what the tooth calls for but they can't go with a smaller band so I, I'm liking the looks of this 13 of me I like using my knife here And I'll, you can see I have little circle marks on the end of my, I like the wood because it kind of digs into the, the band without crushing the band. And then it's always good to have, again, you can talk to assistants. Sometimes they'll throw away these used um, scalers that they use to take off the O-rings on the brackets, but they have a band pusher on the other side. So you can always use... that band pusher in your lab if you get these from them okay so still I'm um, I'm just kind of eyeing it making sure Yeah. So I'm going to scrape off just a tad bit. I'm going to put the cover back on here. I am going to, I would go with a 12. I'm going to go with a size 13. And again, it depends on the branding. You might be talking size 30 something. So th these aren't, these, numbering systems are not universal you know one through 30 some of them start at 32 I don't know where they get the numbers from but uh, as long as you get a complete kit which is what I got here life is usually good so I'm just gonna push that down what you're looking for is you want this See if I can get a better shot. You want this part of the band at or below the mesial marginal ridge and the distal marginal ridge. So I gotta push this down just a little bit. And I'm still seeing some space here, which means I could have gone smaller, but again, I'm not exactly 100% sure. Especially on these young kids, you never know what's underneath the gums. I mean, this thing could be an iceberg. And what you're seeing, you know, is uh, since I'm going to go with 13, I'm going to put this up. Let's see here. Yeah. Create a multi shot and sorry 
Let me work on something real quick. See if that way I don't have to worry about keep. Okay, I'm going to just push down on these bands. <coughs> there we go. I like that. I'm just contouring it. I got a little bit of space there. There we go. I think that looks decent. So now, Cade, you're asking Cade, what are you going to do about this bracket? And I'm going to show you how I remove this bracket off of there in that lug. I may have to trim some of this off um, and get my trusty shears here and trim, try to trim off some of this stuff that's in the way. That works a little bit better. So now I'm going to go and take off the bracket. So let me switch the cameras real quick. Oh, that looks terrible. Try to get rid of some of those dark bars. Again, this is the wrong light bulb for recording video on. But I'm going to use a Mizzy heatless wheel and I hope you can see this there are spot welds see those two spot welds on each side I'm gonna grind on those spot welds until this bracket comes loose and I need a pair of pliers to do this so let me grab some pliers here old trusty rusty bird beak pliers so I'm just going to put this and we're just going to grind right on those solder joints or those spot welds. Now you don't want to go through the band. This is a little bit of risky work because once you, if you go through the band, you got to get a new band. I think I saw the bracket move, so I'm going to take these, grab them on the side. Oh, that came off way easier than I was expecting. And so now you're, now you can just prep this for soldering because if you're familiar with band and loops. The wire is going to start here, it's going to go to the front, it's going to wrap, and go to the back. So let me take this lug off to the side here, and remove some uh, plaster here. There we go. So you've prepped the band for soldering and removed the bracket all in one step. Sometimes, if it's kind of a loose band, it will ride up as you're grinding on it. I'm trying to find the, <laughs> the center of the camera. <laughs> Let's see, I'm going to adjust this just a tad. See if I can get some exposure in here. So. Now, I am going to go, well, I'll use a disc and cut them off. Your way is much better. Well, I've done that too. I, Jay, I've, I've, done, uh, I've done it both ways. Yeah, I've, I've, I've done it both ways. I've, I've done a disc. It's scary when you do a disc because you can just slice right through the band because the bands are so thin. So sometimes I like to take my time and just use a heatless wheel and just grind down those uh, that came off way better than it usually does so uh, you know yay me but I like to grind down the little spot welds and then just put a slight little twist on the bracket and it pops off sometimes there's a spot weld right in the middle of the bracket and you gotta twist that uh, sometimes that causes a hole but usually it's small enough you can patch it with solder but um, I, I like using the Mizzy heatless wheel this thingy majigger because it's a little bit slower and I don't trust myself sometimes I turned off the extra noise okay 
So I have some Z base here. I think Steve Zar was using uh, what was he using? Fillet or something like that. Uh, but I'm going to put just a little bit to hold this band in place while I'm soldering and bending wires. I'm getting down to the end. I love my process of trying to get the zap it out of here. Alright, I like to put a little cap, <laughs> a little hat on it. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. Put a little hat on it just to keep. So, this is my accelerator. So, I put a little hat on it so I don't accidentally drip an accelerator down into the that tube. So, I'm going to activate this with the accelerator. It's a little dangerous, but my zap it ran down. So, why did I uh, put it on the mesial and distal? Well, because I'm going to solder on the buckle and lingual, and I don't want any anything there. So, now I've trimmed before, I'm going to make my banded loops. Oh, uh, one thing, Jay, I came across this. A little plug for Jay, OrthoLab videos. Now, look, right here on the cover. Band and Loop, right there. So complete training course for beginners. So Band and Loop is a great beginner. So v techniques, and exercises, anatomy, terminology, space maintainers. Video four, you will find Oh, getting an error for my internet speed. Okay. So I wish y'all could see. I'm going to zoom in on this camera right here. And this tooth, like I said, it's scaring me a little bit because it's real subgingival. So I'm going to try to keep this back just a tad. Otherwise, I'd try to touch it and always try to touch it. Uh, but this is going to be a little concerning and this tooth as you can see is really leaned in okay so let's get to wire bending bending the loop part so th again this is uh, 036 and I usually just start with a slight curve and I'll mark, you know, buckle lingual of that. And y'all can't see that. Who am I fooling? You can't see that. So, live stream here. <laughs> so bear with me as I adjust all the dadgum camera angles. They keep moving on me or I keep moving. But the important thing is, I need to get serious about my wire bending. There we go. All right. So I'm going to put a slight curve in this wire. Just like that and then I'm going to bend it back there and back there so that way it's like a little catch a little U that's going to catch that tooth wherever it's at I'm going to back out of both of these just to capture me actually bending the wire son that one is already backed out
Now, I'm going to put a slight curve in this. So I'm going to capture the front, and I'll bend it up just a little bit. Bend it up just a little bit. Oh, I probably need to do it on the round side here. So I have a slight little curve. And this little curve will allow the doctor to adjust it out or in. So if they want to adjust it out to reach this tooth, they just lay that curve down. They straighten out the curve. If if the tooth has drifted already, they'll just bring that curve back up. I am going to put one slight little bend here. See what if you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to just bend it over the arch. So it has a slight little bend this way. It's got a bend this way, which is going to surround the tooth. So this part will surround the tooth. This part will lay on the saddle. Now I did that a little bit too much because that tooth isn't all the way erupted. It's going to have to be a little bit flat. So now I'm just curving it up. There's so many different theories and stuff on this. I'm, I usually just try to bend best to the tooth, but I try to follow a certain pattern. And as you can see, I'm, I'm bringing it up. I'm curving it up to this buckle side. I'm bending the buckle side first. And uh, I got the front where I need it. So I want to bend this buckle side up. And then I'm going to put a right angle in it, right at that buckle mesial cusp. And I'm going to go straight back with it. Now it's hitting right here on the back of the model. Right here. So I'm going to cut it off about right there. And mark that and cut off right there. And that should clear that. It was keeping it from lining up like I want. So I'll always check, make sure the front is down. And I am going to bend this out just a little bit and back up. So if you see what I was doing, I was sw I'm swooping it up, and I had it put it laid in a little bit, and then kick out the part that's going to be soldered. I'm going to cut off a little bit of that, and I think I got that pretty much right where I want it. So time for the other. Again, I bent it straight back. Hello, greetings from Poland. Let you PK. Nice to have you watching. All right, so. One thing to consider is the bite. So, this is the lower jaw. Now, I don't have an example of the upper jaw, but the upper jaw, the lingual cusp of the uppers are going to be in here. 
the buckle cusp are going to hit here. So you kind of want to keep this wire in the middle of the band. The lingual, nothing's going to be biting on it because it's the lower. The upper jaw is always on the outside of the lower. So you can keep it high. Now I like to keep it high on the band because remember how subgingival, how much gums I had to remove. If I put the solder joint way down here and cover it with solder, it's going to impinge on that and cause blanching um, and be uncomfortable for the patient. So I'm going to keep it a little high, not that high, I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. And I'm going to cut a little bit off. So if you take a look, hopefully I'm getting this from both angles, hopefully. The lingual side is going to be in the middle because it's got a stamp cusp, not a stamp, incisor cusp on the upper jaw hitting right here. You're going to have a stamp cusp in this middle groove, this fossa, um, but nothing here, so I'm going to keep it high on this side. So I'm going to cut them a little short. I don't want little ends. I like to save as much trimming time as possible so I'll do as much prepping pre-soldering as possible so I do need to bring that up just a tad if you can see that all right so my next step for prepping for soldering, we're getting closer to soldering now, is I am going to use a Mizzy heatless wheel. I'm going to prep the ends that are going to go into the solder joint. So, so I'm going to taper them down. This does a good job of cleaning it too, so if you As you can see, it is tapered. So it'll be less trimming. Oh, doctor calling. Need to wrap this up. This is weird. One of my cameras just died because I forgot to plug it in. So, the wonderful benefits of live streaming. So, I'm down to one camera, but that's okay. So, I'm going to get my Zap It again. And I'm going to put... Now, one thing, I don't want to put it right where it touches the tooth because it will, the Zabbit stuff is pretty strong and it will remove some of the stone that it's attached to when you go to take this off and so it will remove some of that tooth so when you're, when you're doing QC and you're checking to make sure it's touching that tooth part of that tooth is going to be missing because the Zabbit took it off so I, I tend to zap it on either side of the wire here so I got this high so it's high on the band because I don't want to impinge the gums. This one's in the middle because I need to allow room for the upper cusp to touch. And I have, looking straight down on it, I'm right against that tooth, but yet I'm providing a little bit of room to allow that tooth to erupt. So I think we are good there. Let's see if I can get my camera to turn back on. There we go. Just one second. Again, benefits of watching a live stream. We get to see where everything is made. Oh, sorry about the audio there. 
So if I need to make any last, I think I got that a little too high. I'm going to just get my small three prongs. I'm going to make a small adjustment downward. One thing I like about this right angle that I've been in here is it it's an extra grip for the uh, solder joint. Put a, a bend in the wire that's embedded in the solder joint, and it helps out a lot. I've doing that I broke my zap it off. So let me reapply my zap it. Didn't catch it. What wire thickness are you using? I'm using 036. Now I don't know what gauge that is. Um, I have to look it up for you. I don't know what pole in. If y'all use gauges, this is 036 of an inch. 0 0.036. So, all right. So now I am going to put, get ready to solder. I'm ready to solder this thing. So I have my flux in a bottle. Um, I'm going to shake it up real quick. You know how they separate. One trick is I like to use a, uh, I'm going to try and film this, show you my little trick. So I got my camera here and I have, I know this is all dirty, but a vibrator and I put this on the vibrator just for a little bit. And it helps me mix it up. And, it, and if it was stuck in the tip up here. Alright. That really messed up the camera, didn't it? So I like this because I can just squeeze it on to my solder joint. There we go. And we are... Oh, sorry about the audio. My, my uh, mic got caught. So I'm going to use some heat shield which is this stuff right here, this Vigor heat shield. Uh, you can buy it off my Amazon store page. They sell it on Amazon, so it's real easy to order. And then Monojet syringe, you could just shove it in there. And I like, I like to use it for a couple reasons, especially when I'm fitting my own bands. You know, this little thing right here, this gap that I've created by grinding this out and, and putting in the, uh, um, put so I could fit the band. There's a gap there, but I don't want the solder to wrap around the back because it it will impinge the gums that are right there. So I like to take this and put it in here. See if you can see it from the side. See if I can get a better angle. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to just put it right there and depress the plunger and it fills in that little area. So I've got a nice little protection on the back and the mesial. Because that's the worst, you get to where you're soldering and then the solder wraps around the band where you don't want it to go. So this is some solder I ordered off of Steve Zara's. 56% uh, silver, 1 16th of an inch. I like this thickness. This is what I like. And Steve's trying to get me to try the thicker stuff, and I just have such a hard time. Uh, but I've learned some tricks. So I'm going to do one with the thick stuff I got from his Amazon store, which is here. And got some. This is 1 16th of an inch. This is uh, 1 8th of an inch. Uh, so I'm going to try both. Uh, from his live stream he did on soldering, um, supposed to be tapping it. So we're going to try that. And then I'm going to show you my method with the thinner stuff. So I'm going to get my
little torch here. We'll turn off that light. So my trick also to help with the heat shield is to um, to point the flame away. So sometimes you have to switch hands depending on um, depending on you know which direction you're going. So I'll turn off the light because I like to see. I'm going to turn this one off too. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. I like to see that blue tip. So I'm going to start tapping this. Tap, 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 tap. I'm doing it wrong, Steve. I'm doing it wrong. Oh. Almost had a big, huge glob on there. Did you see that? And then my solder picked it back up. Just a little bit more. Oh. I have to grind that off. See the problems I have? So I'm going to use gravity. I'm going to try to slide that solder joint forward with the heat. All right, other side. Let me get a different camera angle. Looks like this camera does a better job in the dark. Don't mind the messy desk. So there's my solder joint. I'm going to flip this camera over. Bear with me. Aha. Got it. And I'll switch hands. Ah. That is not a good angle. Try this angle. Man, I really want to show this, but my solder is getting in the way. Flip the camera again. Let's try that. I'm gonna get to a certain point where I'm just gonna have to give up. You know what? Let me back up everything. Sorry, see? Live stream. Gotta love it. Let me try to do this with the phone in my way. Oh, I'm gonna have to switch hands. It's good if you're ambidextrous or learn how to do this. So you see that blue tip? I'm just caressing this thing with that blue tip. My flux will then turn clear. And then I know I'm almost ready. That looks perfect to me. It's going to smooth it, use gravity to my advantage, tilt it in the direction. 
So solder will flow toward heat and, of course, toward gravity. Okay, we are turn all my lights back on. Let's take a look at the solder joint. That one's going to be take a little bit of trimming. So let me switch over to my trimming station and we will I'm going to clean this up first and remove it from the it's not a big uh, deal but for me to show this just popped it off I cleaned off the heat shield which is just water soluble it, it just cleans right off there is my abandoned loop there is my model and one thing I forgot to mention was uh, etching this so we so so far if you're just tuning in we've we've prepped the case we've prepped the tooth we fit a band on the tooth custom fit a band um, we've bent the wire and we've soldered it so now I'm uh, going to go through the trimming process part of the process that I a service I offer the doctors is um, micro etching so I have a little micro etcher here it's old and in here is uh, aluminum oxide I'm going to etch the inside of the band because as you can see, the inside of the band is dirty. It's got soldered, you know, heat marks on it and stuff. So let me plug this in real quick. Okay, that should be active. And all it is is just a matter of sandblasting the inside of this. It's good to have a something happen. Oops. What happened? Oh, I didn't plug it in all the way. It helps if I plug it in all the way. It leaks a little bit, so I unplug it when it's not in use. And so this helps clean up the band, and it also helps to uh, uh, with retention mechanical retention so the glue they put on here will you know get in all these little small micro pores that you're creating sandblasting and then it looks to me it looks nice and clean and neat so let's get to trimming instead of using heatless wheel I'm just going to use a regular smooth cut acrylic burr double check make sure everybody's reading this okay so remember this is the buckle side and this is the lingual side so I'm going to taper definitely taper both sides so that it doesn't interfere with the gum tissue as, as much as possible there will be some you just can't you can't help it so that's it for trimming there's trimming this side. Now this one bulked up a little bit. I'm a little disappointed. But I tried. So you see why I like using this burr? It cuts through solder pretty easily. Since I pre-cut my wire going through here and tapered it, I didn't have much of wire to trim off, so this this cuts through solder easier. So I'm shaping the solder pretty easy, and it's you know smoothing off pretty good. 
So one thing I need to worry is just making sure the gingival emergence is not going to impinge the gums any. Because these kids will be wearing this for possibly years as they wait for the teeth to grow in. All right, let me get set up for pumice. cameras hello everyone all right so I like the pumice I think it gives it a nice smooth finish usually doesn't take much on these painted loops I'm just gonna put the I'm using the same pumice I use for acrylic okay so before I move to the other side, let me show you this. Hands are dirty. All right, so there is the side I pumiced. There is the side I didn't. Let me switch cameras again so you can see better. So there is a side I have not pumiced yet. You see it's rough from my uh, burr marks. And then there's a side of pumice. So it's nice and smooth. Got a satin finish to it. So let me pumice the other side now. Rinse it and let's go to Hashan. Alright, so I use Fabuluster. I'm going to change this wheel. I've got a quick changer chuck here. And I'm going to use my, I have a dedicated metal wheel here. And I just use the same Fabuluster I use on the acrylic. Load it up. And so then we have the start and try to get in there you're gonna end up hopefully and I didn't do this but I uh, oh I used a 13 so make sure you write down the band size so if it does come back saying the band was too small you can look it up in your notes you have on this case and uh, use uh, the band size higher because when you finish this it's going to uh, remove those band marks or the, the markings on the bands See, it used to say 13 on there so this is high shine I'm gonna put it in the ultrasonic real quick and we're gonna leave it in there a couple minutes and then we'll finish up now's the time to ask any questions if you got them and clean my hands too and they always get dirty Frank, hello, just jump in to wish you Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too, Frank. I know I need to start having these earlier or later for you. Uh, Cause What is it, dinner time for you over in France?
Mimi? Mm-hmm. Almost. Okay. All right, so let's get our final setup here. Okay, so as that's an ultrasonic, it's getting that pol- last little bit of polishing material off. So, um, so that's it. Uh, that was the band and loop. I'll show it in a minute. Uh, put it back on the model. But uh, it was pretty simple. Let's see, it took an hour. So, but I was explaining everything. Probably take I don't know thirty minutes. If even if you're fitting a band, if you're pretty good at fitting the bands, I hadn't done it. In a few months, fit a band, so it was a little rusty. Anyway, I'm talking to this camera. Anyway, um, so we fit the, we prepped the model to be able to fit the band. We fit the band, uh, bent the wire, soldered it, finished it up. So as you can see, what took the longest was probably fitting the band and prepping it because that's the important part is trying to get that that fit on there. Uh, for band fitting. So let's go get that out of the ultrasonic and let's see how it turned out. Okay. There we go. Let's let's use this camera. So it has, you can see, it's got a nice shine on it. The solder joint smooth. It's not going to impinge the gums any. And you can always trial fit it back on here. Now I've lost the top of the molar due to, you know, heating. But that's it. There we go. All right. That's it. Thank you for being here. Uh, any last questions? Let you. Can you tell me the original name of the flux you use, or better, write it? I heard that you bought yours on Amazon. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, let's see if I can. It's vigor. Uh, creamy silver brazing flux. So it's the same brand as this. So I believe it's on Amazon too. I know, I believe this is, I have this on Amazon. I'll look and see if I can get that on there too. So this is Creamy Silver Brazing Flux. Um, I like the creamy stuff. I don't like the paste stuff. Uh, I like the creamy because it gets underneath the wires and everything. But, so it's, it's that. Uh, but there are some other ones that I have. But, anyway. That's it. Hope you enjoyed. Ask more questions down below. Again, if you're watching this after the recording is done, um, you can ask questions below and I'll try to answer them. And again, I'll put some links. There should be a link to the, my Amazon page where you can pick up some of this soldering stuff on there. So um, if that helps. Anyway, everybody have. hope you all have a Merry Christmas um, and Happy New Year if I don't see you. But hopefully you'll see me next week. Maybe. We'll see how busy I am. Uh, but until then... Uh, happy bending.